G'day guys and welcome to the first official podcast, the Four Wheel Drive Podcast. Driven by Shelter, Ronnie. It's uh, it's pretty exciting to be here, mate. We um, super exciting. Beautiful music from the Southern River Band there. Uh, Let it ride, which is ironic for uh, for what we're going to get into here. So it's um, for sure, for pretty sure, exciting, mate. All right, well, let's kick off about what this podcast is about, so um, the audience get a good feel for it. And um, it's all about anything full driving, educational. Get these guys out, advice, tips, and whatever else we can bring to it, camping, all that cool stuff. Yeah, and it'll be a lot driven by what we get from you guys as well. We, we've got plenty of experiences. Um, we're going to have guest interviews with people from the industry. Um, we've got the guru here in, in yourself, Ronnie. Oh. So we, um, <laughs> we're pretty lucky to have you, mate. So it's, uh, it's a pretty exciting time. But um, I think we should get started. There's a lot of people out there that will know who you are, um, what you do. But um, give us a little bit of a rundown on, on how you got into it, um, yeah. what, what you're all about, mate. Well, given, given this is the first First episode, I better introduce myself properly and, and so people know exactly uh, where, where my background is from. So um, uh, I am a very passionate four-wheel driver, uh, especially in particular with the remote outback touring. That's, that's probably where I enjoy the most of the stuff. Now, but I'm also a YouTuber, which I've been for 10 years, uh, about 800 videos, about half of those are educational. So all my knowledge and experience is from making plenty of mistakes costly ones every now and then <laughs> i bet but that's what it's all about so i and i guess what we're doing the show is we'll we'll bring forward to people how we got started and get right into it and i guess with you here liam you're going to keep me in check and make sure i don't stray too far off with some technical stuff yes well that that is one thing that i don't have mate so i'm looking forward to your uh to your technical side of it um obviously very passionate about four-wheel driving myself uh i don't probably have the time and um the skill and the rig to go the places that you go. But um, I think that's where we'll find a really nice balance with this pod as well. It's got the beginner level with me um, and we'll, we'll range right up to the expert level in yourself. So everything in between we're going to try and cover here. Um, but it, it's it's all about, yeah, really what, what you've mentioned, mate. It's about... It's about uh, getting people, people out there. Getting people out there, mate. Yeah. And, and that's, I think, a great way to, to start this is, is where did it start for you, mate? How did you get into the four-wheel driving in the first place? Well, yeah, that's, that's interesting. So I guess I'll start with my first four-wheel drive. That was a uh, 2.4-litre Ford Courier. Am I, am I right saying gutless. that you started camping, though, not in a four-wheel drive? Well, yes, that- yes. Two-wheel drives, so XD Falcon, you know, with the big V8 in it, yeah. travelling around. Um, did a couple of trips in that, but they didn't go too well, you know. <laughs> there were a few, few hectic moments there. Uh, one particular moment on the way to the Pilbara, I decided to take the shortcut. Um, you know, my mate didn't want to take the shortcut, but I thought, let's do the shortcut, down a gravel road. And it had been wet and raining and we hit this um, bit of a washout, but we couldn't tell how deep it was because it had water in it. So we hit this thing a bit too hard. The esky in the back flipped over, all the ice hit the windscreen. <laughs> so initially we thought we smashed the windscreen, <laughs> but we hadn't. And the steam coming out of the engine bay, it was just, thankfully, it was just water evaporating off the engine block. So we made it. We made it to Tom Price. <laughs> But we had to turn back because there was a cyclone coming. But yeah, it all we'll started in a two-wheel drive. Yeah, well, yeah. So, so going back to your first four-wheel drive, where, where'd you start really getting into it then? Well, I remember when I first bought that four-wheel drive, uh, me, and, me and my wife were really excited. So she was my girlfriend at the time. So we jumped in the vehicle and we decided to go straight to the pines, just take it off-road. Yep. But what I didn't quite f- realise was I was in a motorbike area, you know, where the dirt oh, bikes yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. the car was just going up and down, up and down. We are getting thrown around. We are having, having lots of fun though. But at that stage, I still didn't understand about tyre pressures and things like that. Yep. So my first real four-wheel drive lesson was at the Lancelin Sand Dunes in this four-wheel drive. And so we are staying at Lancelin Caravan Park and we had a group of boys group of girls and i took all the girls there first because i was the only one with a four-wheel drive yeah right so i went to the dunes the girls egged me on to drive up the dunes a bit so i did and then got completely bogged like so bogged and had all the girls out digging the car <laughs> and i'm looking around there's this f-250 driving around no problems other cars driving around i'm like how are these guys not bogging so this guy this old guy pulls up next to me in a 250 and he's like mate um look like you're a bit of trouble there but you, uh, if you can teach me how to get girls to dig my car out I'll teach you how to not get bogged mate and I was like okay and I said uh, he goes what PSI are you down to and I was like what's PSI 
And he's like, mate, you need to let your tyres down. So I let the tyres down, drove straight out. Lesson number one. Yep, there it is. <laughs> Plenty of people would have learnt in those Lancelin sand dunes too. I, I would have thought the hard way as well. Um, so that was your first real experience with... My first proper experience was yep. actually getting stuck. Yeah, right. But I had been off-road before and it always been rough, you know, hard yeah, tyres, yeah. you know. Yep, yep. Yeah. And where did it move to from there? So you obviously... <clears throat> We see the trucks that you're rolling around in now. It's, uh, yeah. it's improved a little bit. It was a bit of a progression. Um, so I had a Hilux and funnily enough, there was this uh, summer storm. It was a hailstorm. The car got completely damaged from hailstorm, right? So I decided to, instead of um, writing it off for insurance, I got the payout. And then I, was, I thought, you know, let's do this car up. So I used the payout to, to do the Hilux right. up because this, this is a Hilux at this stage. Yep. And then we took that off-road heaps and um, had heaps of fun in that. But then I found there was a lack of um, information online about four-wheel driving because yep. I'm, I'm very self-taught. So I go online to learn a lot of stuff, YouTube and whatnot. But it wasn't much available. So, you know, I started writing a blog and that blog kind of took off. And then I found that people looked at videos more. Yep. So back when I had the Hilux, I started doing the YouTube channel, just uploading some stuff. And then people started asking questions. So I started doing videos, explaining things. And then from there, it just took off. And then we went to the 79 series, which I still have. And then now there's a Troopy and there was yep. another Hilux in between. So, yeah. it's So Four Wheeling Australia and the Ronnie Dale YouTube channel, they've been around for a decade now. So you've been doing that? 10 years, yeah. Basically with the the idea of, I suppose providing people with information on, yeah, on exactly what you've just spoken about, getting started. Um, That's pretty much how, how it started. Yeah, just giving people advice and yep. and pe- people just consume advice that they love to learn things, love to know how things work. Yep, especially blokes like we all we all want to know how things work. You know, I, I bet often you sometimes get down a rabbit hole of YouTube and you're like watching some factory video on how they actually make something right yeah I, like, how did I, get here? I often <laughs> i will often youtube how to do something and within the first uh three minutes of a 20 minute tutorial i will have probably called the professionals in and i'll be getting them to do it <laughs> for me but um <laughs> how about yourself liam um you you've got a pretty cool rig out there and you were saying before that you know it's it's not as good as the rigs i'm driving but i think you're underestimating really about a rig you know because yeah, yeah i probably so I, I've obviously, I, I didn't really grow up four-wheel driving. So um, we did a little bit of camping as kids uh, with dad and we were always out the back of a Commodore wagon. Um, dad would buy some some cheap cars here and there that we'd bash around. And um, my first, I, I, I don't know if it was my first, but a, a, a vivid memory that I've got is driving um, or being a passenger in dad's uh, little Toyota Celica that I reckon he bought for a thousand bucks. We had a, a mountain out the back of our town where in the wet would just turn to a mud slide basically yeah, um, yeah and the challenge was to get up get up the hill as far as we could in a Celica and, and then we'd just roll back down in reverse um, when we couldn't make it any further so it sounds like a lot of fun mate <laughs> it, it was a lot of fun at the time it had the flip up lights and it was it was yeah. a cool car to be a part of but um yeah so I, I suppose once I got to WA I, I moved over when I was 18 and I think the accessibility to four-wheel driving and exploring um in Western Australia is I, I I, like I said, I wasn't into it growing up so much, but um, it's just so enticing when you get over here. And I feel like the appeal of being able to drive an hour in any direction out of Perth and to be amongst nature in the wilderness, pretty um, good, bashing your car around or driving on the beach, it's um, it's unreal. So that's what yeah. inspired me to, to, I suppose, get a four-wheel drive. A few of my mates had it. Um, they were going to surf spots and, and all of this, and that's where it sort of stemmed from. So I started with the the bog stock Ford Ranger, bought it in 2017, brand new, and um, just having a ute, I just I just loved it straight away. We were, we were into it, obviously, photo up on the monitor there for us, but um, that's where we started, just going down dirt tracks and um, having picnics out the back of the ute, and, and obviously that developed, and now I've got, a, I've got a curb crusher, really. It doesn't get off-road as much as I'd like. Um, that through a stage canopy. Here, right? Yeah, yeah. This, so the stages that we went through, Canopy, snorkel, bull bar, got some lights on it. Um, the tyres were on the way at this stage. You throw some drawers in for some storage. Um, and then I entered that that rabbit hole, like you said, of just um, adding mods to my, my four-wheel drive, making it look cool, um, blacking out the tyres. So it, it ended up being a um, – I, I just fell in love with the with the whole – I suppose the whole industry, really. Um, and, and then obviously, yeah, I've, I've changed setups – 
multiple times now. Oh, to you just change the canopy again. That's what you got now. Eh? Yeah, this is what I'm still rolling with now. And then um, gone to rooftop tents and swags and um, luxury. It, it's yeah, luxury <laughs> up there, the penthouse. But I um, yeah, a lot of it's been for the city, unfortunately. But I'm all about making it look cool as well, which I, I don't, and I'm not afraid to admit that. I just want to. Oh, we all, we all do, yeah. mate. We all so do. <laughs> it's um, but yeah, this, this is where I got into it, and mate, I'm still with my my Ford Ranger, um, six years on, so it's just ticked over 150,000 k's. It's been to Broome a couple of times. It's been oh, you've been uh, bogged there. It's been underwater a couple of times. Oh, really? Um, it's just it's <laughs> it's done a lot for me. Um, yeah. yeah. So th- this is on a highway in Esperance, the you know the highway beaches yeah. down there, mate. So I don't know how. Just off I've managed to, the side, to like, eh? get myself in that position, yeah, but that yeah. was like a car crash when I when I hit that bog. But it's um yeah, got a couple of young blokes who unfortunately knew who I was and pulled me out, which is quite embarrassing. But <laughs> um, yeah, mate, it's become a real passion for me, and and I just started by myself really. Um, and I suppose like you say, with your channels and and other channels like that out there, is is where a lot of the passion stem from as well. To to learn and um so you find that you learnt a lot from youtube to sort of have yeah a look? definitely theoretical knowledge was was massive for me which is what I've, i'm hoping we can get across with this show yeah especially for sure. um because like you say there's 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 still a little bit of a bridge in that market there's it's all good and well to, to film yourself you know yeah climbing the high country or um or running across the simpson desert but it's it's probably the, the ins and outs of um, yeah, it's like explaining as you go yeah, what, what yeah. you did to do this and that because there's it's so much. Yeah. It's, yeah, and I think I've, I've gained a lot of confidence from watching those videos and listening to those, um, those certain things that are out there because sometimes you, you, can't go and, you can't go and practice these things a lot of the time. Like it's, it's, if you're going for a big trip, you've put a lot of time and effort into yeah. that one big trip. You don't get a practice run at it. No, so, not um, at a big trip. Nah, which is, yeah. Yeah, which is I think – the, the best part about these um, these sort of things. So that's hopefully what we're going to be able to give to, to everyone yeah, out there. Yeah, for sure. So do you, did you find that, um, so you get all like the theory and, and like the advice and then you take your car out and then you actually practice what you sort of learnt? And yeah. And you sort of get your own sort of knack? Is that how you've sort of, have you done any training or anything like that? No, nah, so I haven't I haven't done any training, which I, I, I wish I probably had of at the start. And there's, a, 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 you would know more than I would, but I'm pretty sure there's a lot out there in terms of, there is, yeah, yeah. yeah. Companies doing that, but um, yeah, a lot of it was was me sort of watching a, a lot of stuff. I don't have any social media, so YouTube's my go-to when I want to uh, when I want to watch something online. So um, I, I probably didn't go on purpose to get myself bogged, to then practice a snatch out or anything like that, or yeah, yeah. Um, figure out how to use Max Tracks the best way and, and stuff like that. I, I just when I came across those situations, then you um, having that it. in the back of my head from from what I'd seen yeah. was really helpful for me. So, uh, like you say, dropping tire pressures. Um, another funny one of mine was rocked up to Wedge Island. Um, it would have been pretty bog stock, my, my Ranger at the time. Rolled out onto the sand in a little convoy. Um, I still had the, the stock tires on too. Didn't hit um, four high or four low. I just left it in two-wheel drive. Oh. Engines just about... <laughs> hitting the limiter and yeah. i'm wondering why i'm not moving like the other boys are similar to to you at, at lancelin and yeah um that was where i just had to take a minute someone came over the radio and said mate you have to drop it you have to drop the tires and put it into four high at least um <laughs> so that was a, that was a hard lesson another embarrassing time but uh, you know it's never embarrassing when you're learning because yeah, yeah. You, you're not meant to know that stuff straight away so no. um yeah there's a couple of funny ones there but um i think i think everyone everyone has like some embarrassing moment at some stage and and some of them, I was talking to a mate yesterday and he said he was up north, he's, he runs a um, mechanical shop and he was like, oh, I just want to drive that 30 metres onto the beach here. He was up near Exmouth and just sit there and sit on the tailgate, watch the sunset going with a cold one. So he drives down, he reckons, and then goes straight down. Yep. And he's got his business name all over the car yeah. and he's like, oh no. Yep, <laughs> yep. That is, uh, yeah, I, I suppose it, it, it is embarrassing, isn't it? But you got to experience it at some stage, That's don't you? It. The, the That's highs it. and lows of four-wheel driving yeah. as well. So, uh, yeah, very funny. So, I think we touched on... The training. The training a little bit. Yeah. So, I I have done training, but I didn't do training to start with. So, all I did training for was to get my credentials to run tag-along tours. And right. we'll, we'll talk about tag-along yeah, tours yeah, as well. Yep. Because I think they're better than training to learn because yep. you, you have more fun. Training is good, um, but it's... It's a bit pricey and not everyone can afford it. Yeah. So, but if you, if you can, it is a good, 
it is a good thing to do. It's definitely, um, I'll definitely recommend it because you learn about your car. So if you go to, to a decent one, they'll teach you about your car, how to get your car in full drive, yep. your car in specific with all its extra little gadgets, you know, like maybe like a rear diff locker, yep. how to use, when to use, when not to use, more importantly. Um, and then also tire pressures that work for, for their vehicle when they're loaded, unloaded. And there's a lot of theory as well. So um, generally speaking, if you go to like a, a accredited one, You'll sit in a classroom, you get a lot of theory stuff and you might be sitting there going, I know half this stuff, but you're going to learn a lot of little things that you didn't realize yep. you didn't know. And then you go out on your practical. So I definitely think that training is, is definitely worthwhile if, if, you, if you can afford it and bring your partner with you. Yeah, yep. Because one thing that's yes. important is if you if, say, if, you know, we break a leg out there, yep. if, if our partner can't drive the car, then how are you going to get out? Yeah. So I've got to know yep. how to, yeah. Yeah, very much. So, so you're saying you've done tag-alongs before, not, Most, not doing them yeah. anymore or? Uh, not doing them anymore. No. I just got too busy with, with the YouTube. They've probably um, become quite popular now, the tag-along tours too. <laughs> so we, we, we still get emails. We still get emails. Yeah. And, and because I'm from a Danish background, so my, my dad, he's, he's Danish, so he's, he's, his accent's a bit thick sometimes. Right. So when he replies to emails, sometimes they can be a bit blunt. So yeah, okay. you know, just, just remind me of something yesterday. I saw an email come through. Oh, you're interested in this tag along, and and the and the reply was, "Sorry, I can't help you there." And I was thinking, Dad, you know, I, I know he doesn't mean to be blunt, but that's Dad's blunt. name, Br- <laughs> Brian. Brian, yeah. yeah. So so Brian's not being rude. He's just no, no, he's not being rude. Yeah. That's just the <laughs> way it is. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, he's, we we um we did the tag alongs to, to, to together, so they were great fun. Yeah, I uh, got to hang out. Uh, with my dad a lot on yeah, camping awesome. and that. Yep. But he got a bit over it after a while because he used to come on the trips that we used to do for YouTube and that. But because I arrived at camp at night consistently... You are notorious was, for that, aren't you? Yeah, he was doing <laughs> his head in. So fair enough. But um, yep, right he still on. looks after the website and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. Yep. But uh, yeah, the tagline just got too busy. But the taglines, they were like, really fun. Yep. Really fun. And the best part about tag along is you get like you get a whole bunch of people and i think that's the biggest turn off to people they're like oh man now i'm going to be like in a convoy of 12 cars that doesn't sound like a lot of fun but i tell you what it is a lot of fun because when you get to like some obstacles everyone there's a bit of banter that brills up yep so especially in like a longer trip like eight days at the start everyone's like a bit you know offish you know yeah, when you first meet people yeah, but yeah. at the end of it people are like hugging and kissing and see you later yeah, next time great, and great they'll hang out yep some of them will hang out afterwards, which yeah, is cool. Yeah, was that? So what sort of destinations were you heading to then? Was uh, like, Are these sort of close by to... Yeah, well, a um, bit, bit of both. Yeah, so okay. So close by, long trips as well. So the trip I was, we were talking about before we started the, the podcast, yep. the, the bite, that was like the big trip. Yeah, right. That was right like on. an eight-dayer where you had to have certain things on your vehicle to qualify to join it. Yeah, okay, yep. Like not have 19-inch wheels because they used to bust tires all the time on them. Yep. And uh, to have enough fuel range but that was about it and then yep. we, we'd sort of help them out with anything else um but then we did like short ones up the coast uh, savannies um that that was a good short one and a lot of people would start with that one then they'll go to a longer one like the yep. holland track and then they'll yeah. go to the next one yep um so the, the big ones are awesome and i think what i really enjoyed from it was was teaching people but also from absolute beginners first time out i would learn from them as well you know, they've done something clever with their setup, yep. with camping or something, or, you know, they've done something with their car and it's like, wow, I never would have thought of that, you know. Yeah, yeah it's interesting that the, I suppose that's where th- those sort of things are good because how often do you actually get to, I suppose, to stop and have a decent look around other people's setups and yeah. I suppose a tag along tour is just, like you say, you get maybe eight new friends out of it plus eight new ideas on yeah. how to set up your car as well, which Definitely. is... Which is which is great. Um, I suppose on, on the same, along the same lines. But other other YouTube tutorials out there. Are you, are you apart from your own? Is there any other out there that that are really helpful to you? And I mean, you're yeah. probably at a different level now to a lot of people. But yeah. Um, but I've I've learned from YouTube tutorials as well. Yeah. Um, there was a guy in particular, Andrew White. Oh so yes, Andrew yeah, yeah. Pierre. Yep. yep. So I. I remember back, well, way, way back, I, I watched some of his TV shows and that. But then he, some of his stuff went on YouTube. And there was a couple of little, um, it's, it's, it's more like sort of basic sort of outback travel. You know, it, it, most of his stuff is in Africa. Yep. But there were, there were some really good 
ideas in there like um how to get out of like a sand rut and stuff like that so i've, I've definitely learned from yeah. from him as well and then from there just taking taking what i've learned there learned a lot of my own stuff from mistakes and then sort of gone from there but i think most of the stuff i'll learn from the internet or from youtube is more like about how to set up cars yep. in a different way um but most of it's kind of self-taught yep yeah just quickly on andrew andrew's south african isn't he uh, I think he, he was actually born in Sydney. Oh right. Yeah, but I think I think one of one of his parents was in was Australian. The other one was from England, and then but he lived in oh, South okay. Africa. Right. But he actually lives in in WA. Now. WA. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 There's been the reason I asked. There's been a fair bit of uh, chatter on the socials about travelling Africa, South Africa through. Is that on your horizon at all? Um, yeah, like I, I would love to travel Africa at some stage. Yeah. Um, but there are other places I'd rather go Before, first. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I just, I just thought I'd throw that in there quickly because yeah, it, yeah. um, it reminded me of something. Um, again, another similar thing here, but four-wheel drive clubs. Yeah, four-wheel drive clubs. <laughs> T- talk me through those because I'm, I'm not part of one. I've never been yeah. part of one. I've never looked to be a part of one. How, yeah. do, they, how do they operate? It. It's not my caper. Okay. I'll say that. But, I mean, I have experience with a couple of clubs. I've gone out for a day with them. Yep. And I've actually learned a lot from, from that as well, especially convoy stuff. Yep. And it's good for people if they have a specific vehicle. Yeah. Okay. You know, yeah. Like you get like the, the, some quirky groups. And yep. I don't want to offend any Land Rover Defender owners, <laughs> but, but they are a bit quirky. Just like Troopy owners are a bit quirky yep. as well. They're kind of like... You know, their own community, their own their own little community, yep. and and I'm sort of part of the Troopy community now as well. So you know, I'm one of those quirky you got the people wave too. Going or is there yeah, yeah, there's, there's yeah. a Troopy wave going. I yeah. can't do it. So <laughs> there's also a seventy wave. That's just one of those. Oh right, it's just yep. the one finger salute. <laughs> in, in the nice way, of course, not not yes, the, yeah, no, not I'm, the middle one. <laughs> I think I've actually been given the middle one by a couple of seventy series drivers, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, that doesn't surprise me. They're a bit arrogant. It wouldn't be Jaden, would it? <laughs> No, not Jaden. Actually, <laughs> good good point. Jaden, our producer behind the uh, behind the desk. So if you hear another voice entering into the uh, into the realm, that's Jaden behind the um, yeah, behind the desk. <laughs> uh, no, it wasn't me, Liam. I wouldn't do that to you, mate. I know, I know you wouldn't, mate. It's um, yeah. I, I, I've got an eye on you though. I've got. I don't have anything against him just yet. So when you when you hear Jaden's voice, it's kind of like hearing the full drive god, right? Yeah, that's it. He he. Anything that comes out of Jaden's mouth is correct. Um, He's got he he's he's behind the behind the desk googling anything that we uh, that he doubts us on. So yeah, you'll probably uh, pull me up on a few things that I've said. Online. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> um, uh, look, clubs clubs are good, but they have pros and cons. So the pros are you have you have fees to pay. You have to turn up x amount of times to be able to go on trips. But when the club is really big, unless you're in with the um, look, I'm not saying every club's like this, but if you're not in with the the tight circle you're probably going to miss out on a lot of the trips because yeah, they okay. fill up yeah righto because they're yep. only allowed to take 12 cars out yep it's a bit like tag long tours there's there's a limit and that's like the department of wildlife limit yeah okay and also for insurance purposes yep so they're limited to that convoy sometimes they run two convoys but it's also not great for the track if there's 24 cars in in you know yep. like so short after each other yep so you probably notice like easter if you head out somewhere the tracks are pretty chewed up. Yeah, yeah. And that's just to that high traffic the volume, on them. which yep. you can't avoid. I mean, the, the bush does come back, but the yep. tracks, you know, but... Um, Is there... Because the, I've seen on some tracks as well that the the Land Cruiser Club, WA, have their sign up oh, there and, managed, and it's yeah. managed by... So is that... Are they just on a trip? If they're doing a tag along tour out there, they just sort of, you know, clear yeah. a tree if it's there or... Yeah, is that, that, is that what that's about? Yeah, they kind of manage the track. Like, yeah. say if there's like... Um, say if there's like a well on the track they'll they'll service the well they'll yeah, fix okay. that yeah. and and like because a lot of these clubs they'll have like people who can weld uh, you know so there's many positive things about clubs yep um but if you you got to be in that inner circle yeah, so if okay. the club gets too big i think some clubs they have a limit as well for, right. for that reason but yeah so let's say land cruiser club uh, land cruiser club club that's a holland track have you done the holland track i haven't done the holland track which i'm looking forward to Chatting yeah. to you about at some stage during this yep. uh, this podcast. It's pretty because, cool. Yeah, yeah, I've I've seen plenty on it, um, and I feel like it's a a, a good one to do. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, definitely for bucket sure. list item for me. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it should definitely be a bu- bucket list trip. It's good history there and stuff. Yep. But we'll we'll get to that. Yeah, one. Yeah, we'll get there. And that was stage. Uh, and also, if anyone at the Ford Ranger Club wants to 
throw me in the inner circle. I'm uh, I'm available. Um, <laughs> yeah, mate. I'd, we haven't really touched on. We spoke about your rigs before and how far you've come with them. Um, we've got them up here to have a look at. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you've got to a 79 and a Troopy now. You've tried the Hilux. You've obviously had a, a range of cars beforehand as yeah. well that you've camped out of, but um, you've got two of the more iconic setups in Australia now. Uh, yeah. This how, how have you ended up here? Well, the 79 is something I always wanted. I wanted a, a double cab yep. V8. Like I've always been about V8s. Most of my Falcons have been V8s, all broken down. Yeah, yeah that's just what yeah. happens. <laughs> um, yeah, look, I just always wanted that vehicle, and finally they released the dual cab with the V8 because yep. I only had it with a single cab or the Troopy or the wagon, and I wasn't particularly sure about the wagon because yep. I'm a U- I was a Ute guy, and I still kind of am a Ute guy, yep. even though I have a Troopy now, but um. Yeah, I just, I just just wanted that. Just wanted a swag in the back, and then and a fridge or an esky, and then head out yep. and just go camping and do do some pretty hard tracks, but also, um, you know, do do the remote stuff. It wasn't until I actually did one of my first remote trips, I was like, you know what, this this is what I really like. Yeah. Although I like you know trying some hard tracks, you know, those designated tracks where where it's a challenge. You got to climb rocks and there's risk of vehicle damage and stuff. Yep. So you get that that bit of a thrill, um, but going remote gives you i reckon or gives me the same kind of thrill because you know that you're relying on yourself and whoever's around you and the vehicle you're driving yep because if anything happens out there it's it's either get the e-perb out or the sat phone or something like that yep yep um, so the mechanic, and no one out there. mechanical nature of the yeah you know these sort of cars which yes. a recent video of yours has uh has probably highlighted that oh the, too, with, with uh yeah yeah with new versus old and um yep. some really Really good points, which I'm sure will be unpacked across this podcast as well uh, as we go, because there's a lot of um, a lot of chatter around that. Yeah, there at, is at the moment. I thought I was going to get a bit of heat from the uh, <laughs> video of uh, um, was it was it what I say the end of four drives. That was the, yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. And I thought I was going to get a lot of heat, but I didn't. Like so many people, I overwhelmingly agreed with what I was saying. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah. I was surprised. Reason. Yeah. And we got the Troopy up now. Yeah. So um, the Troopy, that's that's the first non-Ute since my Falcons that I've ever owned. Right? So yeah. the full Courier was a Ute. The, the first Hilux was a Ute. The second Hilux was a Ute. The 79's a Ute. This is the wagon. Yep. Enjoying it? I love it. Yeah. I love it. But I love the 79 equally as much. Yep. Because 79, swag. That thing there, home on wheels, kitchen pull yep. out, rooftop tent. It's pretty cool. That'll yep. be like the touring around Australia. Route. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And have you have you got space for the whole family in there? Yeah. So I've, it was a ten seater. So it had bench seats yep. in it, and then I converted it to a four seater. Right. Um. Like yeah, got it over to pits, got all that certified, yep. and we cut the roof on it. So although only two people can sleep in the roof, um, I can throw a swag on top of the roof rack, which is on top of the the roof cut. Yep. So basically, it's a roof conversion on top of that. It can house the roof rack, so the swag goes up there. Kids go on a stubble swag, and then uh, me and the wife will go yep. in a rooftop upstairs. Tent. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I was looking, and is that still a work in progress? So it is. It is. I'm meant to be travelling around Australia now on it, right. but we're about a month or two behind. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. No, that that it's, it's pretty exciting. A Troopy is a dream car of mine, so one day I feel like I'll have to uh, scratch that itch and yeah um probably join you there but yeah i, I highly recommend it yeah. so the reason why i haven't gone to troopy earlier was because troopies are looked at as two seaters right yep but uh, i'm sort of yeah i'm sort of just want to show people that you can turn it into a four seater yep and yep. definitely yeah yeah uh, one thing as well on the 79 the no canopy set obviously you, you're a ute person you've said yeah does that ex- so that that doesn't include having a canopy on the back i used to have a canopy do you have the did you have a it was like, like a big box set up aluminium box yeah yeah. yeah yeah that was the first so it started as you then i put the box on and then i did a half box with some oh, yeah, other yeah. stuff yeah. and then i changed it so many times yeah. it's ridiculous just half the fun of it but yeah yeah but that's where all my costly mistakes have been you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yep. at one stage that car weighed 4.2 ton right. and it's registered gvm is 3.3 3 ton right so I had to do something about that. Yep. And we're close to a pit inspection soon, so I can get it certified for 4.2, but I'm not putting a canopy on it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yep. Well, I think you... Oh, I don't know. I'm going to say you've probably nailed the, the look there. Like, looking at that photo right now, that just... Yeah. 
That's it, pretty cool. That's yeah. that's from the Flinders Ranges in South oh, Australia. Yeah. Yep. And we got permission to cut a new track. Right. And that was hectic because some of the stuff we put the car through, like I damaged a tray, I damaged the car. It was pretty hectic. It was like a collaboration with another crew called Sidetrack Australia. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know those fellas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Really, really cool crew to hang out They've with. They've just done the Holland track actually, haven't they? Yeah, they yeah, have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. yeah. No, they're, they're cool. Um, that, that, was, that was an awesome trip. So did you have to have any mapping blokes with well, you here to, to map this track out or we had it? got charlie the owner with us right okay. and he he had a he had walked and driven motorbike the the route yep. of least resistance which actually changed because it, it turned too sketchy in one point yep but we spent four days three days doing three kilometers three day okay about about a <laughs> kilometer a day <laughs> yeah. it was it was pretty hectic yeah right yeah that's um that is slow going it is. It's like yeah, a lot of this stuff here, like just yeah, 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 just crawling. Yeah, I actually damaged my um, drive line out there too right. uh, on a section just after that one there. I got both wheels pinned down, and there was just too much pressure on it. Right. Eh? So uh, for context, how far away are you from any uh, services here? Oh, uh, not too far from the shed. But if had we broken something, getting the car out would have been would have been absolute nightmare. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yep. That's where it's like. It doesn't look like there's any safe sort of uh, way out of that. Drive. no no it's like leave the car there and then charlie would then have to bulldoze in to where we were right. and then the track wouldn't be as fun as what it would be yep, yep. yeah or yep. it becomes an ornament out there yeah well, that's true <laughs> <laughs> it's uh yeah new home for the for the animals out there yeah um, but he's got heaps of tracks out there and we were opening a new track that was um meant to be like more for more challenging yeah okay and we had the y62 patrol club head out oh, yeah. there uh, after us and three of the cars made it through the qualifying part. The other right. six had to bail out. And that, that was just a qualifying part and they didn't do the next part. Right, to, to okay. To give you an idea of how yeah, hectic yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah I suppose that, that that stuff doesn't really look like Y62 uh, country no. too much. Y61, no problem. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, but Y62, it'll do it. But it'll be damaged. Yeah. You don't want yep. to damage a yeah, car that Not, like not a nice car like that, I wouldn't have thought. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like a 200. I wouldn't take that through there. Yeah, no yeah, way. yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Hey, um, we've got a, a segment towards the end of our podcast around the fire pit. Ah, yes, yes. Do you want to explain a little bit about what we're going to well, cover in this? So the fire pit, um, we've specifically left this, so I don't know what the questions are that, are gonna, that I'm going to be answering, which is half the fun, right? Yes. So... A little bit, little bit excited about this, I've got to say. Yep. Um, but yeah, we got the fire going. But uh, hey, look, sometimes we <laughs> might have a new car release or something that we'll talk about or, yep. or a burning topic that comes up. Yep. But uh, for the time being... So this is, we're just picturing the fire in the middle here. Yep. We've got the, the crackle in the background. Um, talking You're all... like a cold one right now. <laughs> yeah. It's right yourself. Uh, <laughs> definitely. Plenty of shelters here. Shelter, that's right. Look at that. We're <laughs> stocked drops. up, ready to go. I don't need all of those, that's for sure. All right, let's get right into this then. Um, right. So Jake P has started us off, um, and probably touching on a little bit what we just what we just covered there. How do you go about mapping and planning a trip for somewhere you have never been before? Oh, good question. Um, I will sometimes go on forums and have a look at what the passionate people are discussing. Sometimes club forums yep. that have been there, um, and you can get a lot of detail. A lot of detail stuff there. Forum guys are that other twerky, uh, quirky kind of people. Yep. And they go next level on information. So that's where I obtain information. And then I will go and then look at permits and things like that, look at what's around. I'd even go to the point of seeing where the airstrips are in case yeah, something right goes on. wrong. Yep. Um, that's and a detail I've never thought about before. Yeah, this, this, and, and you find out a lot of things like uh, I was talking to the Royal Flying Doctors and they have uh, medical caches around, dotted all around. Right. Uh, and if there's like an emergency and you ring them up, they'll actually give you, hey, this station has a big cache of um, medical supplies. So you could go in there and they'll have like morphine, all kinds of stuff, but they will tell you what you need to do. So right. it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. It's like an unknown thing. Very unknown, yeah. I've, I've no idea about any of that. They obviously don't tell you where it is because, you know, they might get raided. Yeah, yeah of course. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I'll just, yeah, that, that that's my planning process there. And then it goes to the mapping to see what's there. Then I'll go on Google Earth. I'll spend a long time on, on Google Earth. And then I'll try and transfer that to my mapping device. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 
and I'll put all these locations in. What mapping device are you using? Uh, so I use a Garmin Overland. Oh yeah, yep. Um, there are some better versions of the Garmin that I've just seen, um, but they're like two grand upwards. Right. But the one I'm using is about 700 bucks. You might yeah, be okay. able to get a special 600 bucks. It's a really good unit. Doesn't yep. freak out like other units do. And you can put all the points in. Um, that's that's pretty good. And yeah, then right. I'll, I'll, I'll have a meeting at the pub. Um, we'll have a couple of shelters and we'll discuss about spare parts we're going to bring. So a lot goes into the planning. And then who's going to bring electrical gear? Who's going to bring mechanical tools? Um, what's the plan? What are we going to see? And are we actually going to manage to see everything? And it, when you're planning and you see all these cool spots, don't expect to see them all. Yep. So if you run behind in time, just skip a spot because you're going to have more fun. There's nothing worse than rushing to every try yeah. and do everything. Yep. Yeah. Good excuse to always come back if you miss something as well. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Um, right. We've got another one here from one day underscore as underscore a tiger. What? <laughs> yeah. That was a. Uh, that was a bit of a tongue twister. What destinations in Australia or other countries would you like to explore in your vehicle? Ooh, I would say Iceland straight away. Yeah, right. Yeah. I would really love to see Iceland. Has there been much done out there? Uh, uh, the Forex uh, over, uh, not Forex, uh, Expedition. Oh, oh, I forgot what they're called. Is it Expedition Overland? Uh, I think that's Expedition. Is it the yeah, American, Clay. Are they yeah, yeah. American fellas? Yep. Yeah, I have seen Clay, it. Clay yep. Croft and that. Um, I met like I met Claire Croft in um, in Utah. Oh, sorry, Arizona. While I was over for the Overland West. Yep. Um, yeah, that that place looks awesome. But they they actually got a YouTube uh, series going on at the moment. Right. And that just made me want to go there even more. Yeah. Okay. You know, a yep. really cool area. But also Alaska, New Zealand, they all come before. New Zealand. I would go to South Africa. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Would but, you take? Would you take? Like. Would you think about getting the 79 over there? Like, I know it's it's doable, but it would be, I've, be bloody costly. I've toyed with the idea, and currently it's it's it'll be more cost effective to buy a car in that country right. and then do it up. Yep. Um, yeah, but I think to send something to Iceland is probably cheaper to send it to Iceland than to get something there. Yeah. Okay. Also, maybe borrow a car. Yeah. True. Yep. Um, look, be a bit reluctant to send the car unless I'm I'm going to do a lot there. Yeah. So, right. Yeah, there for a long time. So I think America can get a one-year travel visa. Righto. But if you don't get that car out of there because it's not 25 years old, they'll take it to a crusher. Ah, uh, right. Yeah. Geez, that would be that would, <laughs> that yeah. would be traumatic. That would be very traumatic. Um, <laughs> another one here by Fantastic Underscore Adventures. When you travel on your own, do you find the journey or the destination more enjoyable? Ooh, I think the I think the journey for me for me it's a journey. What about you? Is it a journey? Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. Yeah, definitely. I, especially when you're on your own. Um, there's nothing like being sort of just solo in the car, taking yeah. in everything you, you go and buy. And yeah. it could be a 10-hour shift in the car. Um, yeah, that's it. And then like the anticipation of what's coming up. Yeah, and, yeah. So I think that's, yeah. I think the journey as well. I'd agree yeah. with you there. But, you know, of course, the destination just comes with it, right? Well, that's, yeah. yeah that's why that's, you're just going through the journey, isn't it? That's yeah, <laughs> it makes the journey worthwhile. Yeah. Yep. The destination makes you appreciate the journey in some cases. Yes, definitely. Like Twilight Cove. We'll talk a bit more Twilight about that. Twilight Cove. Okay, stage, look yeah. forward to unpacking that. <laughs> yeah. uh, right, back to the what you've had coming through. Obviously, a V8 fan. Uh, this is just from Jake. Um, not sure which one. but uh, <laughs> What was the one bunky old car that you regret selling? Oh. Didn't have to be bunky either. If it, yeah. <clears throat> I don't. It's not one that I sold. It's one that I ended up just, it got trashed. Yep. And that was a, a XJ Jeep Cherokee on a farm. Wow. I had three of them going at the same time on a farm. But we did a lot of, I don't know if you've seen the video where we snapped tow balls to show people what happens. So you shouldn't use uh, tow yes, balls. Yes, I have seen yeah. that. Yep. So it copped a bit of a flogging there, but <laughs> those things are unbreakable almost. Right. Because it... it Eventually, it, it lost its um, tail shaft and it was only a front wheel drive. And then I lost the keys. And with the Jeeps, a nightmare to try and start without having to mobilize the keys. Yeah. So okay. that's why it got left there. Now it's an ornament at the entry of the full right. drive park. That's right, right. In, uh, out in York. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. I have to go um, check that out. White Gum, actually. White Gum Park. Right. Yeah. I think all I three Jeeps are there. actually making a, a, an entry. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, an entry piece. <laughs> Go through the banner. Yeah. That was uh, Jake Big Jarvie, I think, or just Jaden's just let me know there if I've got that right. Um, 
Jake Big Jake. A couple more for you, Ronnie. What inspired you to start a YouTube channel, and do you th- did you think it would get this big from Dwayne Tribe? Oh, that's a good question. What inspired me? I just had I just had the channel up, right? So I was just uploading some some trips and stuff, and then that's when people started asking questions. Yep. And then I started doing these terrible terrible videos where I'm presenting a camera oh my god I, I cringe when I look at them <laughs> I and can't wait to watch this back <laughs> oh my god it's so, it's so embarrassing when I look back but yeah we're all going to start somewhere that's it um, yeah I forgot the question now <laughs> yeah no yeah. well like the, I think the inspiration you spoke yeah, about yeah the inspiration earlier, yeah yeah um, so yeah it was just questions and then like giving people information and the appreciation I've received back and then it just it just maybe do more and more yeah yeah and then so i never the, expected to be like what it is the, yeah, yeah because you you have you've really blown up haven't you with, yeah with yeah that, it's, that people love it which it's is going great. well yeah 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 yeah, yeah. um and be, torben your, your good friend torben yeah makes it makes it all tick as well i suppose um looking forward to meeting him hopefully one day yeah yeah we'll, we'll, here we'll, have to, we'll have to head around the camp or something yeah like. yeah i yeah. uh, love Torben. um now probably the most important one uh that's come in late and i think it's been inspired by the uh by the crackling oh, fire in the background, yeah, yeah. but um, your best way to start a fire, because you well, you rock up in dark, so you mightn't actually see how you do it, but um, how do you go about that? So my favorite way is to use a ferro rod, so the ferrosium rod, yeah, yeah. where you know, you're like a striker. Yep. That's my favorite way of doing it, and also from collecting something dry on the way in, Right, wherever that's from, uh, I forgot uh, bulrush, which is you know in those swampy areas. Wherever it's that, or some spin effects, or um, just some grass from somewhere, and and sometimes I will often harvest more, keep it in, keep it in my jacket pocket. And next time I'm out camping, it's like, oh here, here we go. Yeah, and then and then crank the fire that way. That's my favourite way. Sometimes it's frustrating for people I travel with because they're like, just get the fire going, yeah. you know. I'm like. <laughs> They just want to get the blowtorch on it, you know? Yep. Um, but if I want to fire it quickly, I'll just get a, a Zippo or something out. Yep. And get yeah. it down. Yep. Yeah. Nothing like the old Zippo. Yeah. The smell of the old. No, no, um, no petrol. Uh, no, no petrol. No. <laughs> I don't condone that. No. That no. was by uh, CNU. CNU08. C- I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes with those that, uh, aliases, you, you're worried they try abbreviating something yeah, else. Yeah, but they're trying to stitch me up or something here. Yeah. Um, it's like, you know, Miss, Mr. Ben Dover, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've been done by those before, for sure. Um, mate, that brings us to, to the end, obviously. Uh, that went quick. W- that went very quick, and I hope we're on time. This is, our, this is my first yeah. crack at doing this, so we'll, um, we'll reckon, see if we've, we've kept it on, on reckon, mark. Yeah, there. I reckon one more thing. I reckon, yeah. I reckon um, let's... Let's give people the one piece of advice for an absolute beginner before we sign off. Right. Jeez. For an absolute beginner? Yeah. Um, What's your advice? Could be could be vehicle, could be camping, could be traveling. My, could be- yeah. I thought about this a little bit in case it did come up. And, and this is off the cuff for anyone listening or watching. Um, but I thought about it when I first started. Don't expect your four-wheel drive to go and climb mountains and get through the softest sand possible and do big river crossings um, because obviously there, there's the very capable vehicles and then there are the, the bog stock vehicles which you can still do plenty with but never expect and, and I think this will keep you pretty safe while you're out there as well don't expect too much from your bog stock vehicle learn it, it'll do plenty for you yeah don't get me wrong um, but I think the, the biggest thing it takes time don't expect too much straight away um, you can go and buy one second hand, ready to go, done up, you're, you're straight into it. But if you're starting off from scratch, you've got a, a dual cab ute that you want to start getting out on the sand a little bit more on the tracks. Don't expect too much from it early on. Build your way into it. Yeah, and le- and, and you learn more about the vehicle as well. Yeah, get to know it before like you... different lines yeah, to take with this yep. car compared to the, yep. you know, the the car on the big tyres and all that. Don't, yeah, don't yeah. go throwing 35s on it straight away. See what it can yeah. do, with, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. especially if it's your daily. Yeah, yep. definitely, definitely. Couldn't agree more. Uh, I was going to be cheeky and just say like the tire pressure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it's the number one thing. Yep. It's just tire pressure. But what I will add, because we've already spoken about that, I will say when you do get bogged because everyone's going to get bogged at some point. Yep. It's just don't freak out about it. Hop out, take a photo. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed. <laughs> Absorb it. Think about how you're going to get yep. out because the worst part is if you panic and you try and you just make it worse. Yeah, you just rush and... Yeah. Yep. 
Of course, unless you're stuck and the tide's coming in, that's a different story, get, but get moving. we won't get into that here. Yeah. Which, uh, <laughs> now, anyway. We've seen some friends do that, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, you'll find us, Forward Drive Podcast on Instagram, Forward WD, that is. Uh, all our episodes will be on Backchat Studios. Go to that on YouTube, and obviously we'll... Uh, Where can sub- people send questions? Uh, they send those straight to Instagram. Am I right, Jaden? You are correct. Yep. I got that right. Straight, straight to Instagram. Um, obviously, you, you've... You got an influx of questions on your channels, mate, straight away. So it's uh, it's all happening here. Um, fun first episode. Yeah, that's it. I think it's time for a shelter and sign off. Let's get into it. See you next week. Southern River Band will see us out. See you guys.